Barry. Hello, and welcome to Between Sets with Church. Today we catch up and listen to a local musician who has been around this area for quite a few years now. He's a singer-songwriter, a music teacher, and one heck of an entertainer. Today's guest, Mr. Eric Kidd. We are here in Central Barrie and finally catching up with a good friend and Barryite, Mr. Eric Kidd himself. Welcome to the show. Well, hey there. Good it to be been, here. It has been a while for sure. It, well, it's been a while since we've been seeing people. So it's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's true <laughs> but too. No, it's, it's very been true. a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's let's get into uh, your beginnings of the music scene. How did you get started on, and who were some of your influences growing up? Well, how did I get started? My sister got a guitar, an old silver tone with the F holes my, my mom had picked up somewhere and my sister had her first guitar lesson and the guitar teacher said, you got really nice nails and, and you're gonna have to cut the ones on your left hand and she said, Eric, would you like a guitar? Because <laughs> she wasn't cutting her nails and that's sort of how it started. I, was, I think it was around 10. And then from there, um, I took a few lessons and a bunch of lessons and um, my uh, soon-to-be stepdad sort of came into my life and he played guitar and that was just kind of a big influence. I, and uh, Ed's a big influence too, that, that's Ed. <laughs> um, but he was performing in the cottage with a little amp and a speaker and I thought that is so cool and I wanted to do that. So over the years I started writing some songs and doing that sort of thing and then I guess the influences, my early influences, my short answers, you know Eagles, Lightfoot, Neil Young, that sort of thing. but. It's a lot broader than that. I, I, you know, played some classical guitar, you know, Andre Segovia, Christopher Parkin, but that doesn't really show up in what I'm doing here. Um, Gordon Lightfoot was definitely a big part of it, but uh, a lot of other Canadian artists that I really loved, like Valdi and Murray McLaughlin and, uh, you know, folks like that. Um, you know, there were some blues guys I liked, but, uh, yeah, there are just so many. It'd be kind of Chet Atkins was a big, uh, big influence. You know, Great guitarist, the, yeah. The big Gretsch guitar and, and all that sort of stuff. And he, uh, he sort of produced almost everything coming out of Nashville for a while. And uh, um, yeah, no, just yeah. music in general. I, I, I've been to the opera. I, I love country. I love folk. I like uh, you know anything that uh, one of one of my sort of trite little sayings I say if it's done with the sincerity and dexterity you've got my interest you know there you go there you go yeah. you mentioned uh, Gordon Lightfoot how was the connection there I understand there's uh, there is a connection there even now oh. and, and going yeah back yeah it. well it started out that I uh, had that first uh, you know album the my sister had it Lightfoot exclamation mark and uh, I learned how to play a D chord off the front of that he's sitting there and he's and that album just sort of really just caught my attention and from there I uh, you know I, I started buying his records every time it came out and over the years I think I was almost 12 the first time I saw him at Massey Hall which is always a, a big deal you know it's like 1972 mm. and I've seen him pretty much every year since and uh, and then over the years, um, I'm very good friends with his, uh, his nephew, so, um, you know, in the young days, I would sneak backstage before I knew any of, uh, any of the Lightfoots, and uh, I was this kid who uh, somehow managed to get by security, so it was fun. And then uh, over the years, uh, I was already playing guitar and making my living playing guitar, but um, I had the opportunity to meet up with Red Shea, who was Gord's first, you know, lead guitar player was touring with him and recording with him and very instrumental in the early sounds so Red Shea uh, was just an absolutely wonderful experience having some lessons with him like I studied locally with a fabulous fellow Marcel Poffin who mm. literally changed my life you know yeah he was a legend in this technique time wise teaching, yeah. you know he, he gave me a few things and sort of leaned on me and you know and all of a sudden you know it was no effort for me to be practicing four or five hours a day, and what kids doing that, mm -hmm. you know? So, but Red Shea was just, uh, it was more of a, an experience uh, being with him. And, and then, you know, I, I also work with a group that does uh, 
the Lightfoot tribute called Classic Lightfoot. Yeah, I was going to say, you took the Lightfoot thing just uh, yeah, one so, step I mean, further. And, and it's funny, I always felt like I was being self-indulgent playing Gord tunes when I'm playing, you know, my pubs and my other shows. But it turns out uh, I was wrong. People love his music. <laughs> so. True. True. Um, your, your own material, I noticed lately that you've really started to push on your social media, some of your, your own. Um, yeah. Before we get heavily into the social media side of it, I want to talk a little bit more about your, your songwriting and your originals. Uh, what, what inspires you to, to write your own material lyrically? Like, what, what, what inspires Eric Kidd to, to get up and, and create his own music in, instead of for the, for the last several years doing, doing other people's yeah. music? Well, you know, I've been writing since I was a teenager, but not really sharing it with the world. And uh, it's one of those things that it's, it's not like, oh, I want to do it, I, I, I've got to do it, you know, like, a, and, and, and basically relationships, life is sort of the, the inspirations. I've written about other things, but it seems like most of my songs are relationship songs. <clears throat> um, a lot of times, it's a musical thing, and I'll come up with words later. Sometimes I come up with an idea for, for a song. But it's, yeah, I, I would have to say life and its, its challenges, you know, mostly relationships. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of those, um, I'm sure. You know, some are more optimistic than others. Some are, oh, oh darn. <laughs> <laughs> um. Getting on to um, the, the the social media and stuff, we we had talked about that before we went to to, to tape. Um, we talked a little bit about your your blog that you have. You have a new blog going. Well, reasonably. I, yeah, uh, I started a YouTube channel, and I and uh, my uh, my daughter's sweetie. I call him my son-in-law type unit. He's, he's a wonderful human being. 
Alex Cipriani, and he does photography, and he's a great musician, had a, had a few different bands and did recording, but he uh, says, what is your, your thing? Like, you're scared to do anything online. You, you won't do a, a Facebook Live, you don't want to do a YouTube show, but you can play in front of 500 people and you're not scared at all. What's that? I don't know, the camera scares me or something, or, or the internet scares me, it's got a life, you know? And, and being a human being, you're probably going to make some mistakes and it's got a life after that. Well, he set me up with uh, some of his gear and said, he was kind of bossy, he says, here's your thing, you're going to do a little show half an hour every night this week until you're not scared of it. So I started doing a, a YouTube live thing and, and people were making comments and I started doing some original stuff on it and uh, the reaction was good. So now I do uh, one basically every Monday night on my YouTube okay. channel and, and I've done some other things with uh, uh, some other folks on Facebook and I've, so I've set up a Facebook channel as, or page as well. Um, so yeah, hey, tune in on Monday nights, 8 o'clock. YouTube, you YouTube.com slash Eric Kid Music. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> That's a good plug. That's not a bad plug. <laughs> Any more plugs while you're here? You might well, well, the Facebook page is the same thing. It's Facebook.com slash Eric Kid Music. And uh, there's a website coming. There's really nothing there much. You can sign up for a mailing list if you wanted. But, uh, um, and it's uh, EricKidMusic.com. So. Cool. But it's not quite set up yet, but it's coming yeah. really soon. How has the, uh, the audience reactions been over the years? Have you noticed any changes like we're going back? Because I remember I'm going back to the, the Merriman days. Oh, my and, God. And, oh, I know. Okay, you've been around town a That's long time. That's right. I have been. Yeah. yeah. Um, as, have you find the, the crowd response change at all between going back to that time and, and now? And do you find your song selection doing your covers? Are they, have they changed over the years as well? Oh, certainly things have changed, but um, especially locally, like, I think one of the things that, that helps me at this point is I'm genuinely really happy to be playing music. I mean, I'm excited every single day. I've had other jobs, and, and I, I make my living out of music, period, and I've been doing that for quite a few years, whether it's teaching guitar or fixing guitars or playing live or... But I'm, I'm completely delighted. I never, ever, ever have a day where I'm saying I hate my job. So I think people see that I'm enthusiastic about what I'm doing. And over the years, you know, I've been doing a long time. I've got a repertoire. So if I play something, I'm seeing the reaction of this sort of thing. Well, maybe I'll move into something else. And, you know, whether I range from something really country or I'll do something a little rockier, whether I'm going, you know, I'll sort of find what's working. And, and I found... Um, I'm comfortable with the audience, so you know I, I know how to. If you're on my side, I'll, I'll work on you a bit, and then it gotcha. sort of grows from there. If you're really against me, I'm going to probably pick a different table to be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sending yeah. my intentions. You know, is, is there a secret to to keep the audience captivated? Do you find I, I don't I know. know. Well, you use a, a lot, lot of humor, and I know you're you're quirky and you're interactive. I'm with, very interactive. Um, you know. I'm pretty serious, but when I'm out in public, I, I can find some humor in almost anything. And I, and I do joke around quite a bit. And uh, I'm not above, you know, picking on you just a little bit. Not mean, but, and, and I get it back, you know. So I, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at uh, playing with the audience and, and seeming like I'm not threatening. Uh, you know, I'm genuinely happy to be doing it. So, yeah, um, over the years, you know, We've all had nights where you think, why am I even doing this? Oh my God, they hate me. You know, and, and once you let your, if you let that happen, you start second guessing yourself and you start to, forgetting words to songs. And you know, mostly I, you know, you can watch my YouTube show. I still make mistakes, it happens. People pay me to play and I still make mistakes. But, but now I can laugh it off and I'll go on, I'm taking another run at that <laughs> verse, you know, or whatever. And you know, it's, it's not such a big deal. And, and you learn that for a lot of people, you know, they, they, they enjoy the music, and if they don't, they'll move on. <laughs> How has the, the Simcoe County crowd been to you uh, over the last, what, three, four decades of, of being performing in this area? Have you ever thought about leaving the roost, or has this, has this been, are you comfortable with, with your decision to stay kind of close to home? And I've been a Barry boy since, you yeah. know, I was born in Aurelia, but I've lived in Barry since I was about one. I'm a Barry boy. Um, I have no compunction about playing anywhere else. Like I'm, you know, I have toured, you know, all across country and that sort of thing with a, 
um, different groups and but, but I love this area and and especially now you know I have folks who are showing up to pubs that I know you know so I get a, a room full of people that are you know they, they know a lot of the songs I play they're they make it fun for me you know um, but no I, I, I don't uh, it's not like I I wouldn't play anywhere else, but this is home, and I, and I love it here. And you know, you got the best of all kinds of things. You know, you're, you're fairly, you're not rural. You've got countryside, you've got wilderness, you've got lakes, you've got fishing, swimming, skiing, hockey. But if you want theater or opera or concerts or a hockey game, you've got Toronto. If you want to go farther north, it's it's all we're really kind of it's a good good spot here in Barrie. Yeah, we're nestled in a, yeah. in a good spot. <laughs> Is there any gigs that stand out in your memory that that's really uh, go wow that was that was something else? Well, you know, it, it's funny. There there have been a few over the years. You know, and I, I know a couple of times, um, my good buddy Steve Ayers and and uh, and, uh, and and Bill, uh, we we did uh, a couple of things at Camping Fest, and those were fun because you know he used to play for hundreds of people and. All of a sudden, we're warming up for the Martels and on Martel Monday, and like there's three thousand people, and then all of a sudden Martel started, and there's five thousand people. Those were exciting. I've done, you know, some concerts with, uh, again, Steve Ayers and I worked with um, the Classic Albums Live, and yep. we did. Uh, uh, that was exciting to have uh, that that caliber of musicians and doing the concerts. It uh, wasn't promoted nearly well enough, but that was fun. Um, you know, and with the Classic. Lightfoot Live, we've done some shows, and Gord himself's come out to hear us and sort of gave us a, a thumbs up, which was fun. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been lots of lots of shows over the years that we uh, quite have enjoyed, you know. Yeah, good. But uh, some of them, and I hate to be like this, some of them sort of meld into the other, you know, like if I've done, I don't know how many I've done, but it's in the, you know, seven, eight, nine, I don't know, thousands of of gigs. Some of them are more memorable <laughs> than others, but I survived them all. Yeah, good, good. It's been a long, long time since the last time around. Yeah, it's been a while since we've talked real close But baby, I love you still and You know I always will But it hurts to see the way I'm losing you You're just riding away You're just drifting away It's been a long, long time since the last time we touched. Baby, you know I want to hold you so much. But you've been drifting away and there ain't much to say. But it hurts to see the way I'm losing you. Just drifting away. Oh, oh, you're gonna ride that sunset on out of my life. Just ride away. Baby, I love you still, and 
Uh, you re also re recently entered the um, that Canadian competition, I believe, the songwriters, oh, yeah, the, the Toyota. CBC Music Correct. Correct. Yeah, 20, yeah. 20, well, what was that like? How was that experience? You know, it was, and anybody who knows me, although when I'm on stage, nobody realizes that I'm shy, um, but that sort of thing, when it comes to that sort of thing, I'm always, oh, no, no, this isn't right, that's not, you know, and I'm hesitant. And for some reason, this pandemic has helped me think that, uh, uh, I was, let's do it. What's the worst of laughing? You know, you, you don't go into it thinking I'm going to win out of 2,500, you know, participants. But I really, really enjoyed the journey and it was exciting and I was promoting it on, on my Facebook and everywhere else and telling everybody about it. So it was exciting to actually do it and, you know, copyright the tunes and do all that sort of stuff that goes along with it and met some good people and, and talked with a lot of them. So it was exciting. Good. And, and I'll do it again. And we didn't, uh, we didn't win. But it was fun. Have you had entered anything like that before? No, but uh, we're uh, and and I, I really should give a shout out to to my good buddy Rob Hammers, who's been really helping me, uh, you know, in a <laughs> in a you know sort of a, just helping me move things forward. He's he's very he's an organized, he's a wonderful human being, and he. Uh, He's been just helping me sort of try to get my ducks in a row, which, you know, if you know me, that's a challenge. <laughs> so he, he's been helping me get into some of those things. Yeah. So. Is, is he, like, working with you on, on and not just musically, but as well as technically as well? Or? Yes, yes, actually, he's helped me. I've been doing a lot of recording. You know, I've, I've bought uh, the latest versions of Cubase and doing, doing uh, some recordings here and trying to get a lot of my original material down. And uh, whether it's for posterity or whether it's to, uh, you know, share around and see who might who else might want to record it um, also when when I get the website up uh, I will be putting uh, the tunes up there as well as <clears throat> you know eventually we'll be uh, aiming for things like Spotify and getting those out. so yeah now he's he's uh, an accomplished musician himself is, is yes he, he is yeah. um, and, and he does a lot of writing we haven't been working on his stuff right now because he's he's working on mine but <laughs> yeah um, yeah, no, he's uh, he also is another uh, Marcel Poppin student from from oh, wow. about a hundred years ago too. So yeah, 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 that's awesome. So um, uh, before we uh, get on to, I uh, would like to hear uh, one one of the tracks that it was dreaming. I believe was that it was called Dreamer. Yeah, uh, that we uh, did on that. And I uh, actually I recorded that all here, and uh, I uh, I'm doing the. The vocals, the, the guitars, everything, the, the bass. Well, you got everything yeah. set up. That's everything. a huge advantage to working out of your house with the Yeah, I, you know, studio. most people aren't allowed to use their living room, but <laughs> I can do whatever I damn want. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Nice. So, yeah, you got a beautiful little setup here. It looks like you've got everything you, you pretty well need. But uh, what more can one ask for? Well, as yeah, far you as know, studio? and, and, and nice. yeah, so I've been, I've been doing that. I'm still writing and uh, still, uh, still recording and. Uh, I'm enjoying the heck out of it. So. Nice, nice. Well, before so. we go too much further, why don't we uh, have a listen to to the song "Dreamin'" and uh, "Dreamer." Dreamer. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's twice now I've had to be corrected on that. So yeah, duh, sorry about that. But yeah, let's uh, let's check out "Dreamer." And thank you very much for being on the show, Eric. It's been a well, sheer pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I've watched your show several times. I've uh, you know seen several of the artists and uh, Joe Huron and uh, and some other. He, he's a great guitar yeah. player and. and Sorry, I know, but he's a wonderful human being. I, he's uh, he's been around back, you know, years ago. Uh, yeah, no, we've uh, we've been friends for a long yeah, time. Good. Well, I've been lucky that it's 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 been uh, living in Barry, get to meet everyone and and basically interview friends. So, so here we go. Here's the song, and thank you once again for being on the show. All right, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Smile and I like your face I like your voice but there's a trace 
sadness in your eyes I'd like to take away I like your body, I like your mind I'm having trouble trying to find Anything about you I couldn't love the rest of my life But I know I'm just a dreamer And you are but a dream In my dream See how 